Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson, and welcome to Construction Project Management Principles with MS Project. Today, we're going to be looking at improving flow, working in zones, tack time, LPS, last planner system. We're going to be talking about these and how they can be very, very helpful in helping you to better manage your projects and your schedules. You know, a lot of times people don't think about how important scheduling actually is in that planning process. If we want to be really effective managing our construction projects, we need to be in tune with the requirements and technologies and methodologies that are used in scheduling construction projects successfully. So I've created a bunch of scenarios here. I did this a few months ago, but I don't think I really put the quite the best slant that I could. I was working with one of my uh, industry partners and clients and very smart uh, individual uh, who schedules uh, high-rise condominium buildings and um, it brought this to mind uh, to me very quickly when we were in this, the discussions and so I think that often we look at things well what's the easiest thing to coordinate without giving much thought to well what are the implications right and so let's have a quick look now let's say that I've got created a few scenarios and then I've got another scenario down below that I'll talk about afterwards but in scenario one, we're just going to have something very simple that you can sort of visualize. Um, we've got footing queuing, all right? So we've got excavate 10 footing pads, install 10 rebar footing pads. So in other words, we would set up our area and we would excavate for 10 footing pads. So we do all 10 of them. And when we're done excavating, then basically we'd install the rebar for those 10 footing pads. And so they would be excavated out, cleaned out, and then we could um, put our rebar in, etc. So we've got it down to two tasks. And it's nice when you've got this big clear area and it's all yours. The trade has that whole area to themselves and they can do their thing. And what trade wouldn't want to do that, right? So that would take 10 days for the excavation crew and then 10 days for the install rebar crew. Now, 20 days, that's a fair bit of time, fair chunk of time. So maybe we look at this a little bit differently. So let's take a look at scenario two. Scenario two, we're gonna do two pads. And then when we finish those two pads, we're gonna do another two pads and we're gonna go so on and so forth. We're gonna do two more pads and then two more pads and so on. All right, if we have the install rebar that after we get two pads done, we're gonna to start to install the rebar next. So when that gets done, and you can see this is where this waterfall terminology comes from. See how it looks kind of like a waterfall? You move from one item to the next item to the next item. You can also see there's a flow that is going on there. Uh, everything is at two days, so everything is moving across at two days. Nice, even flow there to the work. Now, the big thing is 12 days, right? 12 days instead of 20 days. Now, to me, that is a huge improvement because you have to consider that if you took this to your whole project, this methodology, that you've got a nice even flow to the project, you're dramatically shortening the time you're on the project. You know what that does? That reduces risk. The less time you're there, the less time there is for something to happen. Both outside the project, economic risks. We live in a very VUCA world. Lots of volatility, lots of uncertainty, right? Uh, we have uh, the overhead cost, the project overhead cost, the company overhead cost, the opportunity costs of the project. So there's a number of things that are going on there. Every day that you're on a project, there's a per diem cost for you being on that project. If it's a big project, you might have trailers, the project infrastructure that's built up, an admin staff, a project manager, a site super, project coordinators, administrative staff, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching for every day that's going along. So there's a pretty big cost. So now 
In this scenario, we're going from 20 days to 12 days. On a bigger project, you might be going from 200 days to 120 days. Well, that would be a difference of 80 days. That is a lot of administrative costs, and that is a lot of overhead costs that are freed up. The other thing is the opportunity cost. If your field team is there longer on that project, there's the lost opportunity cost of being on another project. So that's a big implication. We'll talk that a little bit more when I go down to um, my later example. Okay, so you can see that sort of flow. And so one, two, and that's flowing in substantially shorter. Now you might get the idea, well, why did he stop at two days? Why don't we do um, one day? So let's try that. We've got one pad, install rebar. So now we've got everything broken down into ones. One, 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 one. Well, there is a savings. There is definitely a savings. We've taken a, shaved another day off, but you can see that the magnitude of the savings is reducing. All right, so the magnitude is reducing. So you might want to think about that too. What's optimum size? One, maybe, what are we going to do? We're going to have the excavator right next to where they're working on the footing pads. Maybe there's safety issues. So maybe that doesn't quite make sense. Maybe you might even think this one doesn't quite make sense. If there's a safety issue, we don't want to run into any kind of safety issues. But this definitely is looking pretty good. This one's maybe a little bit on the tight side for that. Um, if we go and we go to a different scenario, so maybe I go to uh, scenario um, four here. So this was scenario three. Maybe there's one that's uh, making a little bit more sense that's more in the middle here. So let's see, we've got five and we've got five. So this might make a lot of sense from uh, a point of view, say it was pouring of concrete or something, the truck size. Sometimes there's underload costs, different things like that for delivery of concrete. So what is the optimum size for what we're doing and the optimum amount? And usually you're looking at things, how you want to get a nice steady rhythm and you try to chunk things into those sizes. Now I did mention I was going to talk about, well, there's linear scheduling, there's line of balance scheduling. And what's really being uh, talked about a lot now is what we call tack time. And tack time is all about zones and creating that rhythm. So you create a zone and you do the work in that zone and you make sure you complete what it is that you wanted to complete in that zone before it moves on to the next zone. And so in this case, we're creating a zone that would, if I had a floor plan here, I could take a highlighter and I could create those zones. So in other words, in this particular case, you'd have uh, you have five different zones that would be created. And so each zone gets finished, right? And there's a rolling of the trades from one to the other. That is very important. So that really means you want to get those trades to commit to doing that aspect. And you plan the zones around what they're capable of doing and that you're going to have an even flow. And then you make sure that the trades provide the right amount of resources. Resources in the sense of people, resources in the sense of equipment. The goal is not to try to do the zone as fast as possible. If you ever watch the I Love Lucy sort of putting the chocolates on an assembly line or the Charlie, uh, Charlie Chaplin ones where he's working on assembly line and he's tightening the bolts and it's like craziness because it keeps going faster and faster. No, this is where you wanna have this is that uh, Navy SEAL uh, saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. You want to have this nice, even, steady flow. Nobody's rushing, nobody's creating dangerous situations, but there's a nice, even, steady flow to the work. And that's where that can really, really help from that perspective, having this nice rolling effect and making the batch sizes as small as possible. The other thing that happens here is that you have a really good uh, sort of like if we're looking if we're looking at this uh, sense here from the arrow sense we've got that flow of work moving from one area to the other we're also got a feedback loop that's going on there the feedback loop that's happening is well when i finish this right and i start this after two days right after two days i start that i'm going to have a feedback loop 
that is going to basically say, the install rebar, hey, you didn't excavate this deep, deep enough. Oh, we didn't excavate it deep enough. Okay, point noted. We'll finish excavating that and then we can fix that. We're only fixing, we're only fixing two pads. Here, we got to go back and we got to fix 10 pads. So the feedback loop where you're getting information back that the work that you did previously is good is very quick. And if you do it well, this is where LPS, Last Planner System in Lean Construction works really well. You've set up a system where there's really good communication going on, right? You're working developing this plan from a milestone date. You're working developing this plan from a make ready state. So milestone might be three or four months. Make ready a six week look ahead weekly and daily feedbacks. This is going to be really good because the feedback is going to be very quick. The learning is going to be very quick. And that's something we don't see in traditional construction methodologies that we definitely see when we're using this kind of thought patterns. And that's why uh, tact is becoming very popular. That's why last planner system is becoming very popular. And I'm not even getting into scrum here. That's another one that is getting very popular. But it's because of that aspiration for a continuous flow and that communication that's required between the trades. So we've got these choices now. Which one you choose? This one might be too small for the benefits. This one might be pretty good depending on the size of the zones and your floor plate that you're laid out to. And that might have a good uh, layout to it. But this is certainly even scenario four is much better than scenario one. Traditional thinking would go with scenario one. That's where I'm asking you to rethink things and look at things from that aspect. I think it can make a substantial difference to your projects and make you much more successful in that way. So I did say I had another one. For those of you in the home building sector, you might want to think about it this way. And again, it's a simplified example, but it, it definitely gets the point across. Using this, if we take that we've got, you know, uh, five houses that we want to do. So definitely we, we would call it track excavating and track pouring where you do a series of them. And there's advantages that way in cost and delivery sometimes uh, and advantage individually to some trades for sure. Uh, but there are foundation pads, five houses, five days house frame and then it's basically got this even flow going on again it's that waterfall effect but they're fairly long these dates that it's flowing through right and i could shorten this like i could make this start on the monday and then it would be just during the work days and you know what when you start this on a monday then if you've got a little bit where you're behind you can make that up on a saturday a bad weather day that sort of thing could come into play there but there's that flow but it is taking 30 days it is taking 30 days to complete. Well, if we actually did that where we did a single houses each day and we flowed this way from that, then we see a much quicker effect. And that substantially shortens the time frame that we're using on this, right? So we're shortening in that case from 30 days to 18 days. There's quick feedback loops that's moving into the mix. Now, whether you go with 18 days or whether you've got different frameworks and you're going with two foundation pads uh, in two days or looking at it the point is you're thinking about smaller batches and you're thinking about a more continuous flow you have to get stronger commitments from the trades you have to get them engaged early you have to deal with reliable promises things that we have talked about and i will talk continue to talk about on this channel many times over is that engagement and communication team building commitment process it's not nobody said this was easy but the rewards are many and when we talk about housing shortening a schedule that's for another day the return on investment because if i'm a large home builder or i'm a developer of multi-story buildings if i'm able to get my buildings built in a shorter time frame and get them occupied right uh, like houses i can re in houses i can reuse that money for more houses so if i'm able to build if i'm able to build three houses in a two-year span instead of two houses in a 
two year span, my return on that investment money, I'm using my capital, a gain, a large gain to reuse that capital, my return on investment leaps up in very, very large numbers, large percentages. So there's a lot of advantages to thinking about uh, improving the flow of work, having the tact, and tact is the rhythm, having a smooth rhythm. How long does it take from when we start to when we finish to turn over this process? Then we are really getting uh, and going places. So uh, improving flow, working in zones, zoning things off, really looking at the timing, putting the right amount of resources that we're not rushing those resources, but we've got them capable of completing that work in that time frame. It creates this nice even flow. We're optimizing for the project. We're not optimizing for the individual, right? So we're, sorry, we're, we're optimizing for the project. We're not optimizing for the individual trade partner. We're trying to optimize for the project, but you know what? The trade partners are going to benefit because when we don't get those commitments, it throws big ripple effects into things. So on all of them, it actually doesn't matter whether we're talking any of them. If you don't get the commitments of the trade partners, then you get ripple effects and then everybody loses because everybody's rescheduling and everybody's then trying to catch up. And it's sort of this whole reactive mess that we run into you know we hero worship uh site supers and project managers that somehow bring a project in on time after it was miles behind schedule but everybody in that whole process is burned out and stressed out that's not the best way to proceed so we're working at trying to make construction more effortless it's going to take effort to make it more effortless though kind of a, a little bit of a thought for you to leave you with Anyways, I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button, click the notifications. If you have your own experiences, put them in the comments and uh, let's enjoy this journey together. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.